it's amazing how all those trials and difficult times really change them for the better, you know? It's like that word that's written. God himself will intervene in all situations to make it work for those who love him. You don't actually believe that, right? A God up in heaven with a big old white beard and a magical wand just waving it around and making people better? You can simplify it like that if you want. Maybe it's because you don't want to believe that he has strength and peace that doesn't come from him. Not from that dark place inside of him, not where he was. It pains me to remember, but he had no hope. No, no, no! He tried to take his own life. No, no, leave me done! Not once. Three times. I mean, if having this belief or this faith helped him out through all this, then that's beautiful, but that's for him. That's not for me. But why do you sound so threatened by it? Why does it shake your conscience like that? If what you said is true, I think you would react differently. I don't know. I'm just saying, maybe there's more to it than just that. I don't feel threatened. I just don't like the fact that people say that this is the only book and the right book. Like, if I don't believe in this book, I'm going to rot in hell forever. That's not cool. That's hardcore and insensitive. That's what I believe. Yeah, it's true. It's not a pleasant thing. But someone that we love, a loved one, throws the word of God in our face, it hurts. But I will say this. If the Bible isn't true, if Jesus isn't the way to salvation, then I don't understand why it's causing such a gut-wrenching reaction. And a few loved ones, people that you really trust are telling you about it, then maybe, just maybe, they're warning you of something. The way of fool seems right to them, but the wise listen to advice. Here we go again with your Bible talk, your quote-unquote word of God. You do know that your Bible was written by men. God had nothing to do with it. There's no proof that he wrote it and there's no proof that it's his word. Is there? No. Exactly. I'm sorry, I don't mean to change the subject, but I need you to text my cousin for me. Here, this is my phone, it's unlocked. Okay. Who's your cousin? Uh, it's Marvin, but you can find him under there. It's Marvelous Marv. Just tell him that he has to pick up the cake for Gabby's birthday party this weekend. And obviously it will be ready tomorrow and obviously I won't be around to pick it up. Mm -hmm. And it is done. Awesome, thank you, I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Sure. Now let me ask you something. Whose message was that? Was it my message to him because I told you what to write? Or was it your message because you took the phone, typed it out, and sent it. Well, yeah, it's your message, even though I typed and sent it. Exactly. It's the same way with God in the Bible. Though he used these men called prophets to educate and teach more about him to others, it's still God's word, hence the term word of God. Just like that message you sent was my message, the Bible is God's message to all of us. I hope that kind of clarifies it a little bit and maybe helps you think that maybe you don't have it all figured out. Maybe you can use some other people's viewpoints. Okay. It actually makes a lot of sense. Good. All glory to God. All right. Enough of that. How long is there? Yep. About three more miles. Yes. I know the blood of Jesus Christ washed away my wrongs, so for him I'm living.